Welcome back. This one is for Gaetano Guy Russo of the New York Police Department. He didn't deserve to be gunned down by yet another group of renta thugs led by Shane Langston. Following the events of Reacher Episode 4, we began to have doubts about Russo because, although Reacher had reason to believe the detective, someone else was also leaking information to Langston regarding the whereabouts of the special investigators' investigators, and it appeared that this someone was Russo. However, no, he was never the bent one, as Russo declared at France's funeral. Rather, Lieutenant Marsh, his supervisor, was the informant. Additionally, we find out that Langston leaned on the lieutenant with a truckload of cash in a juicy sequence involving Dominic Lombardazzi and Al Sapienza that was flavored with police guilt over 9-11 and Russo's lengthy personal relationship with Marsh. You're the NYPD, and you're aiding and abetting terrorists. Russo asks, seeming appalled, and he informs Reacher that he turned down Marsh's pressure to join the nefarious operation. In these scenes, Lombardazzi infuses his character's innate saltiness with a beautiful, verging on depressing sense of resignation. Russo knew that after that argument, Marsh would turn on him and turn on Langston. This is precisely what takes place. And now, there will never be another opportunity to watch Gaetano Guy savor a chicken cutlet sandwich on Staten Island. We also check in with AM, the shape-shifting weapons broker, psychopath whose trail of bodies now extends from Los Angeles, through Denver, and onward to New Jersey, where he murders a state trooper as she runs his stolen ID. All of this is set up for Russo's pivotal shootout with Langston's hired hitters later in this episode. When A.M. and N.J. says his deal with Langston and N.Y.C. is almost complete, it means that A.M. will be collecting microchips that have been loaded with software to enable his 650 Little Wing missile launchers to fire. Reacher finds out about this information when he follows up with Marlo Burns, the New Age Operations director who fled with her daughter after giving the team a bogus queen's address. Actually, Burns has a wealth of insightful knowledge. Regarding former 110er Tony Swan, she states, he's the one trying to stop all of this. In order to end Shane Langston's incestuous security fiefdom within the corporation, which he had loaded with dishonest former New York Police Department officers like himself, Burns was the one who hired Swan at New Age. Knowing Langston, this doesn't guarantee Swan is still alive, but it does clear their former team member of any involvement in the deaths of France, Sanchez, and Orozco as well as any gunning down Reacher and the other special investigators. That information is the result of Reacher's enormous brain. He was still considering his course of action in the event that his old friend and co-worker turned out to be a turncoat in the lead-up to their meeting with Burns. As a matter of fact, he continued to consider it even after Dixon launched a different type of special investigation in the bedroom. She informs the huge guy, taking off her shirt, we've been blown up, shot at by hitmen, and attacked by bikers. To put it gently, I'm carrying a little bit of tension. Reacher, a man well known for supporting catchphrases like details matter, assumptions kill, and sleep when you can, adds that the last one isn't unchangeable. A fascinating bit of information here, neatly exclaims, Habel vous weit, patron, which translates to dress quickly, boss, when she rouses Reacher and Dixon from their most recent amorous adventure. Given that Josephine Maudier Reacher, his late mother, was a French national, Neagley would be aware that Reacher understood her. Furthermore, Danish native Maria Sten speaks French with ease. Naturally, Reacher must indulge in some pedagogical repartee. She ought to have used the colloquial term twos. Reacher lets Russo drop her daughter off with Burns, knowing that Marlo Burns will assist Lure Langston into the open. He'll take her to his Staten Island cousin's house. However, things don't work like that. Not at all. There's also a fantastic scene in which Russo discovers Langston had gunmen sitting on his property the entire time, and Lombardazzi's entire expression transforms. A desperate pitched fight on two fronts ensues. Russo flees the gunman's car while shielding Burns' daughter from flying bullets as Reacher, and the team's ambush of Langston in a muddy truck yard goes totally awry. Reacher promptly dispatches Dixon, O'Donnell, and Neatly to intercept, staying behind to destroy Langston's most recent gang of thugs. In one case, he does this by breaking the neck of his attacker by smashing it on the rails of a deserted city bus. One thing Reacher will do is make use of the resources at his disposal when it comes to dealing and deaths. Neatly and the others will not reach his place in time, as Russo is aware. He fires back, sending the girl fleeing for cover, taking two shots to the chest as he covers her escape. It's just you and me now, Langston. The murdering bastard exclaims as he returns to the truck yard, calling for a helicopter gunship to arrive. Gaetano guy we barely know you, Russo. We even believed, for a brief moment, that you were a villain. However, as it happens, you were just the type of person Reacher would have chosen for his special investigators. Astute, realistic, resilient, and prepared to go above and beyond. Neagley holds Russo's hand as he bleeds, dying beneath an overpass, while Reacher is cut off from his team and fleeing from oncoming sirens. The best of New York is gone. For more, subscribe.